Hey there, everyone. This is Dave DeBow. Welcome to another episode of the Property Profits Real Estate Podcast. Today, it's my pleasure to be uh, interviewing and chatting with a, an old friend of mine, not just in age, but in the length of time that we've known each other, <laughs> Mr. Ken Beaton. I was just looking at this, Dave, and I was, oh, see, then you throw old in. Man, thanks. <laughs> Ken, how are you doing today, my friend? Well, up until now, I was doing awesome, Dave. <laughs> So I'm, I'm sure if you're watching this podcast, you're probably very familiar with, with Ken Beaton. Ken is a, a professional real estate entrepreneur. He's been doing this for quite a few years. He focuses on multifamily properties, primarily in and around the Ottawa area of Ontario. Uh, Ken has a very varied background, that's for sure. He got into real estate investing after a career as a... Uh, oh. Engineer, bus driver, seasonal, season, let me get it right, seasonal resort owner, campground, <laughs> bus driver, etc. So uh, Ken, Ken has done a lot of different things uh, together with his lovely wife, Joanne, and their beautiful family. And he's really kicked ass when it comes to real estate investing. So he does it professionally. He, he teaches and trains people about it. So, Ken, welcome to the call. Thank you very much, Dave. Appreciate the opportunity. So, just quickly, because we got a, it's a short interview today. I know yeah. you and I can go on for hours and hours, but very, very quickly, what sparked you to get into real estate investing in the first place? Uh, desperation, to be quite honest with you. Financial desperation because of a uh, major turning point in my life when my parents passed away, and I had this major aha that we had no money. And uh, life was going by pretty quick. And, and I just happened to come across a book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad, which we all know very well. And uh, that book sort of, I, I wouldn't say rekindled, but it sparked interest in real estate. And because uh, uh, I had tried to be a real estate uh, agent back in the early 90s. And after reading that book, I realized I could do this. It just made sense to me. So uh, we realized this could be the answer to our financial woes and uh, just dove in with both feet. So you definitely did. I, I recall that you and Joanne invested about 80 grand in, in uh, real estate education plus personal development in a pretty short period of time. Yeah. And that, you know, you, you went from pretty much nothing to a significant portfolio fairly quickly as well. So the cool thing is you've done a lot of different things. In fact, you're a real estate, you, you took training with I think Rich Dad uh, coaching and training, you became one of their coaches. You've done a whole bunch of different stuff. Now you focus primarily on multifamily investing, but um, why, why did you choose multifamily versus everything and anything else? Um, well, to be honest, it was sort of by default. Um, I, the first property we bought was a, um, um, a townhouse in a condo project. And it worked out quite well for us, but it never really turned my crank. It was completely hands off. The second property was a larger multi-unit building that I just came across and the numbers made sense. I had no fear um, being a former real estate agent and maybe just stupid. I don't know. I had no fear and I just took action and um, it was easy to get into that particular deal. And I think the next deal after that was either the tri yeah, the triplex, then a sixplex. So they were all multi-units at that time. And it was during the triplex, sixplex uh, purchase that we, we invested in the real estate courses. And that's when people started to take notice of what I was doing. And uh, that's how I was introduced to the, the mentoring. And they asked me to become a mentor with them. You know, that's sort of how it all took, took place. Yeah, that makes sense. So... Uh, you have taught and trained and mentored many, many, many people over the years. What what would you say are some of the, you know, biggest mistakes you see people making when they're first getting involved in real estate? Hmm. Um, the biggest mistakes they're making is a lot of people think they know everything they need to know uh, about it. And, um, and even myself and yourself included, I mean, we continue to learn right now. We, we realize and acknowledge that we don't know everything there is to know. So uh, a I mean, lot I'm of getting people, to the age where I have to relearn stuff, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I interrupted. <laughs> yeah, throw me off there. Eh? 
Um, so it, 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 it's really about their, their mindset and their beliefs are the, are the biggest mistakes. And people will get into, you know, it's really hard to say what's the one mistake because there's so many. And they all come back to, to a person's mindset and beliefs, really. Um, and that's what I've come to realize over the years. I mean, a big part of the reason for my success initially was because not only did I take the real estate courses, but you mentioned earlier that I invested $80,000. That wasn't just all real estate investing uh, education. A big chunk of that was personal development. And because of the two coming together like that, I was able to achieve um, massive success in a very short period of time. And the biggest uh, mistake I see people making is not investing in themselves first. That's a, pretty, a good way to summarize it. And that's in whether it be real estate education or whether it be personal development or uh, buying resources to help them, finding mentors, whatever the case may be, the mindset they have of doing it themselves and not asking for help is the biggest number one detriment I think uh, people experience. Yeah, yeah, definitely makes sense. Now, you're a huge, well, you and I both are big uh, Robert Kiyosaki fans. He's written a gazillion different books. Uh, one of the books he wrote was Your Unfair Advantage. So he talks about, you know, everybody having an unfair advantage, just finding yeah. out what that is and then focusing on it. So uh, what would you suggest or what would you think is your unfair advantage when it comes to real estate investing? So that has evolved over time as well. So I would say initially it was my unconventional thinking and um, which I would you know, people say creative thinking and um, everybody has the ability. It's just a matter of, you know, one simple uh, change of thought rather than saying I can't do something, which drives me crazy when I hear people say that and simply changing that phrase to how can I, that can have such a major impact in your life. So just thinking differently has always been my unfair advantage. And that has evolved then over the years that I've got many different unfair advantages. So having um, you know, access to information from Robert Kiyosaki, from people like yourself, and, uh, all of the, and having friendships with these people who are so much higher than I am, and I perceive to be higher anyhow, um, is my unfair advantage. And I'm now in a position where people are coming to me to invest with me rather than me asking them for money. Um, so that's how it's evolved. So my unfair advantage is having my this network of resources around me that I've built over the years. But it all started from, I think, just creative thinking differently. So if somebody's saying, well, that's, that's easy for you, Ken, but how can I develop that or how can I improve that advantage myself? What would you suggest to somebody to, A, kick up their creative thinking abilities and B, kind of get, get tapped into a better network? Yeah, well, again, it comes down to mindset because, I mean, now when people, I, when I ask people if they're creative um, or who in the room believes they're not creative, most people put up their hands. And then I ask, follow it up with a question of, well, does anybody in here worry about things? And of course, everybody puts their hands up. Well, that's all worry, worry is just um, creative thinking. Negative but, creative thinking. Negative creative thinking, exactly. So we're capable of doing it. We're just not doing it in the right, with the right focus. So it's to get people to refocus and uh, start thinking creatively, start thinking positively, putting yourself in the right circle of influence. You are the average of the five people you associate with. So sort of take a look at who's in your inner circle. Maybe you need to change your inner circle, which is more often not the case. Um, and start socializing with like-minded people, going out to real estate events, clubs, and so forth, and just getting in that circle, getting in the game, and not being a wallflower like I am. Uh, I literally am, when I go to social events, I'm not the mixer and mingler, um, but that's outside my comfort zone. So if I want to change who I am or the results I'm, I'm achieving, I need to change who I am, and that means I need to get out and mingle and force myself, get outside of my comfort zone. So that's what you need to do is get outside of your comfort zone. But again, that's all back to the mind stuff. Yeah, 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 it, it really is. And, and I found that when I'm at my most successful or when things are going best is when I'm dialed into the personal development and things tend to go to crap when I'm not. So. Yeah. <laughs> 
Definitely. Okay. Um, so, you know, we, we've been working together for many, many years and you've got a variety of different programs and, and trainings that you do. What, what would you say that is, is the biggest problem that you help people overcome when they work with you? Because there's, there's so many different coaches, trainers, and, and whatnot out there. What, how do you find that you tend to help people the best? Uh, I, I think breaking through the I can't do it mindset and coming up with solutions. Uh, people get stuck on, well, I don't have the down payment. I don't have the time. I don't have, I don't have. And uh, as long as you are thinking that, then you're right. You won't have it. Uh, so that's probably the biggest thing I help people with is understand that they have options and what the options are. And um, masterminding is one of the things I love doing with people and just brainstorming about different ideas and solutions. And one of the first things that when I'm brainstorming with somebody um, you know, you throw out some ideas and they'll say, well, I can't do that because, and they start down that path and I cut them off right then and there. And I say, we don't go down that road. There's no, I can't. We just look at, it doesn't matter if the idea is crazy or not. You throw it out there and, um, you just keep feeding the positive side of things. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So Ken, we'll try and get this episode out prior to your event, but you've got an event coming up in May, I believe it is. That's right. Uh, quantum, quantum Leap. Called the Quantum Leap Weekend Event. It's a three-day uh, weekend event, May uh, 10th, 11th, and 12th in Calgary. And uh, it's focusing primarily on what we've just been talking here, a lot of mindset stuff, mastermind, raising some capital, how to approach people in, in, uh, in, in networking environments, uh, going through that whole process. And... Uh, I do it with my business partner, Mr. Mark Prince, who uh, uh, is a master of social, um, I don't know, being able to work in the social environments and whatnot, the mindset. And uh, yeah, it's a great weekend event. If you're able to make it out, you're more than welcome to have you. Uh, it would be great. So if people are interested in finding out a little bit about that. Yes, they can just go to, uh, this is the URL, it's leap.arca, so that's L-E-A-P dot arca dash wa.com perfect there you go and if people are interested in, they can't make it to that event but they find like to find out more about ken beaton what's the best thing for them to do so my website is arca real estate.ca and uh on arca at arca real estate you you can see what programs i offer i've got uh, uh some free stuff on there as well uh special events are all listed there how to get in touch with me there's lots of stuff there you can check out all right, we've gone over a lot of different ideas and, and tips and stuff like that. But if somebody's watching this and they want to, let's say, take the leap into multifamily investing, you know, we've talked about getting coaching and mentoring and going to networking events and all that kind of stuff. What, what would be one actionable tip that you would give somebody if they're interested in making that leap? Well, let's say it's somebody that's already investing in real estate. They're doing single family homes. They want to start getting into small multis. What would be one actionable tip they could take to, to get started with that? Well, I guess uh, analyze. Uh, analyze. Actually go through the process of analyzing some properties to get familiar with the numbers. Um, because when you're, when you're looking at singles and duplexes, you're, you're looking less at the numbers that the property generates and you're looking more at the location and uh, you know, it, it's, it's a, totally different, um, <laughs> Peter Kinch calls it sandbox, right? That you're playing in. And when you get into the multi-units, you're looking at a very different sandbox now. It's a totally different set of rules. Uh, financing is actually easier, especially if you're an entrepreneur. There's lots of positive things about investing in the multi-units, but it's a numbers game, strictly a numbers game. Take the emotion out of it. And the quicker you can understand the numbers, the quicker you can analyze a deal and the quicker you can take action, the quicker you take action, the more deals you're going to get. So uh, it's a matter of identifying the deals, practice analyzing them, and uh, then start making offers after that. I used to have a, you used to have an analyzer available. Is that still available somewhere? 
it is available. I'd have to check my website, to be quite honest with you, though. I mean, that's something Jen manages. Uh, it was on the website. It's definitely part of the programs, for sure. Uh, but if somebody's interested in the analyzer, they can reach out to me. If it's not on the website, reach out to me and uh, see what we can do. All As right. a favor to you, how would that be? <laughs> that sounds good, my friend. It's always a pleasure. Any last words of wisdom or any, any question I should have asked you, but I didn't get around to asking you? Uh, I guess the, the, uh, probably just, uh, one of the biggest lessons I learned in investing in real estate over the years is, is, and this is about me, not anybody else. So, um, but not being cheap. Um, uh, I used to have a scarcity mindset with respect to money <clears throat> and, uh, since evolving and, and growing personally, I, I realized that, um, the more people I help, the more money I make and stop focusing on myself and start focusing on helping other people and getting back to the not being cheap part, you know, investing more in myself and seeing the returns uh, are infinite when you start to invest in yourself. Very well said. All right, Ken, thank you very much, my friend. Appreciate having you on the podcast. My pleasure. And everybody take care and we'll talk to you next time. Thanks. Well, thanks very much for checking out the Property Profits podcast. And if you like what we're doing here, please head on over to iTunes, subscribe, rate us, and leave us a review. We very, very much appreciate it. And if you're looking to create a regular flow of inbound investor inquiries about your real estate deals, then I invite you to attend one of my upcoming live online demonstrations. And you can check that out at Investor Attraction Demo. Dot com. Take care.